depths of the earth to towering above humans on the street. Metropolitan railway stations have come in many different varieties and styles for decades. Some are beautiful, some are ugly, and some are just outright bizarre. But we're not talking about the rich or poor architectural taste of metro systems today. Instead, I'll be talking about engineering feats used to create metro stations and to provide urban transport for the masses, and how your metro station was made possible despite the major engineering challenges, using different construction methods and techniques. We'll be getting into that in today's video. When it comes to metro stations, there are three kinds of general depths. Underground, at grade or elevated. Of course, the heights of those three disciplines heavily vary, but those are the three general categories. An underground station is put, well, under the ground. Underground stations' depths can vary, from shallow to extremely deep. Most deep stations contain escalators, and in some rare cases, elevators. Unfortunately, there are no metro stations using the transportation method of water slides to get from the street level to the deep level station hall. Shallow level underground stations typically use stairs, and in some rare cases, escalators. The next slide depicts how most deeper level underground stations are built. This comes from the book Stephen Beistie's Incredible Cross Sections, which really sparked my love for engineering as a little boy. And I'd probably not be here today making this video if it wasn't for me reading this book as a little child. A lot of underground stations are made with two tunnels, and then a large shaft being dug in the center. This is what creates the station hall, and this station hall allows passengers to access the two rail tunnels through passageways, typically supported by large columns or arches. Some stations have these station halls, but without any arches or columns, but that will be explained later. The world's first underground metro station was also the world's first metro station, being the London Underground's Baker Street Station which is why the London Underground Network is called the London Underground, as at the time, there was nothing else in the world like it. This station is a pioneer and an example to all modern urban rail transport till this day, and inspired the railway boom of the 19th century when it opened on the 10th of January, 1863. Its platforms still serve the London Underground till this day, and is a historical relic for urban rail transport. The deepest underground station in the world is the Kiev Metro's Arsenalna station, which was of course built during the Soviet Union, where Metro was king and the Soviets set an example for Metros all around the world, with their vividly decorated stations and consistent and rapid expansion all over Soviet metropolises. As of current, the Baker Street platforms, because it isn't a station anymore, and the Arsenalna station are both historically protected landmarks as they are a historical monument and a breakthrough in engineering technology. An at-grade metro station is a metro station that sits on the ground. It typically takes advantage of former railways or of altitude levels to exploit this cheaper building process versus a tunnel. In most metro systems, this isn't all too common, as a metro is built typically to serve dense urban communities, which in the case of dense urban communities, underground stations are typically preferred, as it doesn't take up any space above the ground, which in dense areas needs to be preserved. The only large metro system that comes to mind when talking about at-grade stations is the London Underground, which 55% of the London Underground's network is actually at grade. So much for its name. Change the world. My final message. Goodbye. Most overground metro stations share the similarity of having a connection with a railway station, thus the reason of why they are at grade, providing a more convenient transfer from the metro platforms to the commuter rail platforms. Another advantage of the at-grade station is the ease of access. You typically won't have to walk down a long flight of stairs or take a deep escalator. Another advantage is the construction cost, as typically only a platform and rails need to be laid down instead of the many amenities of an underground station, with tunnels, ventilation shafts, etc. 
An elevated station is a metro station that is elevated above the ground, typically on stilts or other kinds of structural support. This is a more common open air variant versus the at grade station. A lot of these stations can actually be found in older systems where the original right of way was existed and an elevated track was built instead of digging underground. For instance, in Tokyo's Metro, New York City's Subway, and in Chicago's L network. And then a lot of elevated stations are also found in newer networks such as Delhi and other cities in India and typically are found in multiple cities across Asia. This is because in the last 50 years a lot of major cities in Asia without a metro network had a public transportation boom and these are large cities without metros and simply building all the lines needed in such a short time with tunnels was impossible so they found existing right-of-ways such as highways or rivers and built elevated tracks above them Compared to at-grade railways though, the cost is significantly higher. But the advantage of an elevated station and track network is that it would not disrupt the street level environment. The first ever elevated railway was the London and Greenwich Railway, which was completed in 1838. Since then, multiple advancements to architecture and engineering have been made, allowing multiple impressive railway viaducts to be built over the years. The highest elevated station in the world is the New York Subway's Smith and 9th Street Station, standing 87 feet or 26 meters above ground. At the time this video is published, the station is 89 years old, which makes the engineering feat even more impressive. In total, there are four types of underground metro stations, pylon, deep column, shallow column, and single vault. The pylon is a type of deep underground metro station. A unique feature of these underground stations are the thick pillars put in between the platforms and the station hall. This is to support the high pressure put on the station and its structure due to its depth. Arches and passageways are left in these walls to allow passenger flow to the platforms. Even through varying depths, the underground commonly has pylon style stations and it's even referred to as a London-style pylon station in some cases. A disadvantage of these stations, however, is the poor passenger flow, as in some pylon stations where the columns are very thick, there is more column than there is walkthrough space. And in some rare rush hour situations, the situation can turn into something like this. Of course, this doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. That's why for deep level stations, the following station design I'm going to talk about is preferred, and that is the deep level column station. The deep column station is the deep ground counterpart of the pylon station but instead with it having columns instead of very thick columns. These stations consist of a central hall connected by pillars which provide a passageway to the platforms through the station hall. A major advantage of these stations is the good passenger flow because the columns are further apart and they are thinner, thus creating more room for passengers to move around during crowded rush hour. Sometimes these columns have arches between them if they need to withstand extra geological pressure, as putting arches is a better option than building a pylon station. Typically for deep stations, metro systems try to build a deep column station if they can, as it is more efficient than a pylon station. The world's first ever deep column station was the famous Moscow Metro Mayakovskaya station, which opened in 1938. How thick the columns are on a deep column station heavily depends on the depth of the station, as sometimes deep column stations can be mistaken as the next kind of metro station we'll be talking about, the shallow column station. Shallow column stations are typically known for their abundance of columns that are not spaced very far apart and that are relatively thin. The shallow column stations actually come in multiple different varieties, with different pillar placements and arrangements, to be able to withstand the geological pressure of the station underground location. Those were so many rhymes that it should be a crime, but it's okay, I do it all the time. My channel isn't monetized, so I don't even do it for a dime. I'm running out of time, so let's talk about the stations on your metro line. Yeah, so that was all basically me saying, um, on some shallow column stations, the pillars are sometimes closer to the middle, and sometimes they are further from the middle. 
personally, I think that stations with columns have more aesthetic potential. So the last one is a controversial topic in the metro community. And that is the last station we're going to talk about, the single vault station. The single vault station is a type of underground metro station which consists of one wide large station hall, with no columns or pillars obstructing the access to the platforms. It only has one shaft or vault, thus the name single vault. Single vault stations can be built at deep or shallow heights, but are typically built at more shallow heights. These are also the best station for passenger flow, as there is nothing obstructing the access between the platforms and the station hall, as it is just a station hall, pretty much. If you want me to continue this series on railway engineering, please let me know. This is video's end. Last stop. Thank you for taking our service. Transfer to video Liberty Square Station Review. Thank you for choosing our service today. If you have any questions, please leave it in the suggestion box at the station vestibule.